Good morning, Encounter Church. We want to welcome you into our living room this morning here in Woodvale. And we thank you for having us in your homes this morning as well. And we're just going to spend a few minutes just lifting up our eyes, our hearts and our minds to Jesus and what he has done for us on the cross. Today is Good Friday and we remember that on this day Jesus took our place and he went to the cross and he took the punishment of the sins of the world upon himself. And that means that each one of us can be forgiven and we can be set free from the curse of sin and death over our lives. And we read about this in Romans 3, and I just want to read a few verses this morning. For we have all sinned and are in need of the glory of God. Yet through his powerful declaration of acquittal, God freely gives away his righteousness. His gift of love and favour now cascades over us, all because Jesus, the Anointed One, has liberated us from the guilt, the punishment, and the power of sin. Jesus' God-given destiny was to be the sacrifice to take away our sins, and now he is our mercy seat because of his death on the cross. And we come to him for mercy, for God has made a provision for us to be forgiven by faith in the sacred blood of Jesus. We're just going to spend a few moments now just singing about what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Join with us in your homes as we lift up our praise. Say you. 
just thank you um, for these words that we've just sung that have reminded us of what you have done for us. And Lord, we just offer our thanks to you for being the sacrifice for our sins, for taking the punishment upon yourself so that we might be forgiven, so we might be set free, so we might be made whole. These are all the things that we think about today on Good Friday. And Lord, words really can't express what this really means to each one of us. But as we offer up our thanksgiving and our praise, we pray that you will be honoured and glorified for what you have done. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have washed us and made us whole. In Jesus' name. Nothing but
Good Friday today because Jesus Christ has taken away our sins. Jesus Christ is making us whole again as we are united with the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Thank you to the Crutes for leading us in worship this morning on Good Friday. We're going to head into a time of communion now, so let's read together from Matthew 26. As they ate, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples. He said to them, this is my body, eat it. Then taking the cup of wine and giving praises to the Father, he entered into covenant with them, saying, this is my blood. Each of you must drink it in fulfilment of the covenant. For this is the blood that seals the new covenant. It will be poured out for many for the complete forgiveness of sins. On Good Friday, we spend time reflecting on Jesus' death, but we look towards Easter Sunday. We look towards the resurrection for the hope that is found in Jesus' conquering of the grave. You know, we don't just see a broken body and blood poured out for no reason. We see that in the brokenness of Jesus' body, in his sacrifice that he made on the cross, we are able to have eternal life. We are able to have complete forgiveness of our sins. We are able to have relationship with God through his son. This morning, as we think about the situation that we and our world find ourselves in, we may feel as though we need a little more hope this Easter than maybe those in the past. And we can find that hope in the resurrection, in the power that we find of the conquered grave, that Jesus came so that we could know him, that we could have relationship with him and with our Father. This morning, you might be thinking of people in your world you know who need that bit of hope this Easter. And we can look towards the cross for that hope. So if you have your cup and your cracker this morning, why don't you spend some time with the people you're with, family, friends, whoever it might be, reflecting upon the power of the brokenness of Jesus' body, of the pouring out of his blood for us. That as we sit this Good Friday and remember the sacrifice that he made, we don't just sit and remember a great man who came to this earth, but we remember our Saviour who conquered death, who was resurrected so that we may know him and that we may have forgiveness of our sins. I want to take a moment to pray together this morning before we hear a message from Pete. Lord, we thank you that we can know you this Good Friday, this Easter, Lord, as we look towards the resurrection, as we look towards Easter Sunday, we can be so sure of the hope that is found in you, Lord, for not only ourselves, but the people around us, our neighbours, our family, our friends, that we can bring the good news of who you are and what you have done for us this Easter to the world around us. Lord, we thank you that your body was broken for us, that your blood was poured out for us, and that through that we may know you and we may have eternal life. God, we remember the sacrifice you made in sending your one and beloved son to earth so that we may have relationship with you. God, we thank you that you love us, Lord, that you loved us so much that you sent your son for us. In your name, amen. Hey, thanks Molly, and thanks for leading us in that time of reflection on this special day that is Good Friday. You know, the story that Molly just used in communion uh, is the story of Jesus at the Last Supper. It's the Passover time. It's where people are remembering the good things that God has done. And Jesus shares this meal with his disciples, breaking bread and drinking wine for what is to come. And then from that place, he goes off to the Garden of Gethsemane. We're going to read a lot of scripture now, and what I'd love you to do is just to reflect, to um, allow the Word of God to penetrate our hearts and to soak us as we reflect on this day, which is Good Friday. Let's read together. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he resumed to his disciples and found them sleeping. 
Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed. My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and he went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of the sinners. Rise, let us go. He comes. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Jesus, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Jesus said, Greeting, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and he sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spat in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard with a servant girl when a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you are talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again. With an oath, I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a cock crowed, then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When, Jesus, when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priests picked up the coins and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for, the, for foreigners. 
That is why it is called the field of the blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear their testimony? They are bringing against you. But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus, Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with the innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him! Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It's your responsibility. All the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand, then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail the king of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon. And they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes, casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemam sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons.
the story of Jesus' death is one that causes us to stop and to think, to reflect on our own life, to reflect on the person of Jesus Christ, God incarnate, who came down and died for each one, every single one of us. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 and 9 says this, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, as it says, sometimes good people will take the place of other good people when it comes to dying for someone else or for taking the punishment for someone else. But Jesus Christ, who was himself perfect, took the price for me and for you. Even when we didn't know him, even when we didn't like him, even when we were set against him, he died for us that we might have life. Today, as you reflect on the death of Christ, as you reflect on the gift that was given for you and for me, may you reflect with a way of thankfulness. A thankfulness that says, thanks Jesus for everything that you have done for me. May you reflect in a way that is thoughtful, but also in a way that remembers that Sundays are coming. And on Sunday, we remember that Jesus rose again, that you and me might have life and have life to the full. My prayer is today that Good Friday will be a Good Friday for you because you have Christ in your life. Because of his death and his resurrection, he lives inside of each one of those who call on the name of Jesus. My prayer is today that as you reflect on him, that you will think of the life that he has given you. But if you don't know Jesus today, today is a great day to receive the gift of Christ that can only come through his death and his resurrection. The only way that we can be connected to God, Christ in us. Have a great Good Friday. Remember, Sundays are coming. It's going to be a victory and a party dance full of hope and life. Have a good day and we'll see you on Sunday.